So here I am in front of the Brantford City Hall where there is an election meeting for Mayor of Brantford tonight and it is run by Rogers which is going to put the video on TV which means that Rogers has coerced me into signing a consent form if I want this valuable share of time which they don't have to give me since the Vezina decision in 1993 where Justice Dubin ruled that oh geez there are so many different opinions in a debate that you don't need them all to still be democratic so you can exclude some and Tim Philp won that with that decision at the Supreme Court of Canada a few years ago, so they don't even have to give me any time. All they have to do is, I hope the light was okay, all they have to do is not give me time, so I have to sign their consent form where they have the right to libel and defame me, chop it up in any way they want, just like CBC Dragon's Den did. So I'm going to be doing a number on them tonight, talking about taking away the control booth from Big Brother Rogers and having City Hall run the debates with Rogers just being a reporter again and not Big Brother in the control room. So let's see if they got the police at the door, because sure enough, I'm wearing my infamous let's sticker and that's what got me taken out by the police last time so let us now wander in here and see what kind of reception they, they've got planned for me going upstairs see what kind of reception how many policemen do they have at the door to make sure I'm not wearing my button I got my button on my illegal button what are they gonna do that's weird no police at the door tonight Wow, oh, there they are. Figured it. Figured it. All right. So, all right, we're here. Hey, John, how are you? Bonjour. <laughs> we're here for the debate. Just drawing numbers for speaking. All right. Okay. Yeah. How did I do? <laughs> Two. All right. Where do I sit? Right here. All right. Thank you for your release form. All right. I'm going to complain about it, though. I don't like it. You know, they said I have to sign a release form if I want to get my share of this valuable time, which gives them the right to chop it up and libel and defame me. And I put a knot, but they said, you won't get your valuable time if you don't let us libel and defame you. And when I was on a dragon's den earlier that year, 18 minutes, it took 15 seconds, chopped it up, smeared me, and then they went, oh, you consented. So they're asking for consent to the right to libel and defame all the candidates and chop it up. And I objected. Excuse me, I need this gentleman to come okay. by with his dog. Sure. How are you doing, John? So I signed it under protest that they got a right to libel and defame me and chop it up, like CBC Dragon's Den did. So, time to kick Rogers out of the control booth and have City Hall run the debates. Get Rogers being an ordinary reporter again, not Big Brother in the control room. Hey, they want to tell us our appearance and what we... I can't show press clippings. They want to control my presentation, my appearance. Hey, Rogers out of the control room. Have City Hall run next year's debate. Rogers, let him be a reporter. Get him to be a scribe, not controllers. Makes sense, right? Hey, they said I can't, I can't show you any props. I got my bus bucks. Where is it? Ah, oh, lousy flecked They scared me so much I left my Brantford transit card at home. It's not your bus bucks. I know, I want to pay the students with bus tickets to shovel the snow in the winter rather than see those buses ride empty. Yes, sir. Gang of kids shoveling the snow paid with bus rides. Yes, I know, but I'm making sure you understand what's at stake. Most adults got jobs or welfare. They don't care about jobs for kids. They're dumbed down. I'm talking to the kids here. Your future's at stake. You'll work for 12 bucks an hour. I got a video. Not one kid said no. So, sure, the oldsters don't care about bus bucks jobs for unemployed kids. No, sir, you wouldn't take bus tickets, so you presume the kids won't, right? Yeah, yeah, you keep paying for Junior's bus pass, and he could have paid it himself. Bus bucks. So. And now they have the right to chop this up and make fun of me 
and I can't sue them for libel or slander because they wouldn't give me my fair share of time if I didn't sign the consent to libel and slander. Hmm. But I only signed at the last minute. Maximum coercion. How dare they say they own the copyright to this thing, you know? We can't use it. Hey, time for Rogers out of the control booth, you know? City Hall's got to run this debate next time, you know? Back to being an ordinary scribe, Mr. Big Brother Rogers. Yes, sir, we're going to slap you down in every city where you think you're running the game. Get back to covering the debates and not running them. Yes, sir, Rogers. This is your last time, boys. You're going to be covering it from the other side, Rogers, pretty soon. Yes, sir. City Hall's got to run these debates. <laughs> it's true. They said we got a right to everything. Philp had me taken away last time for the button to the Supreme Court. They said, okay, taking you out because of the button wasn't good enough. But since 93, they got a right to kick you out anyway. So, the Vezina decision, Justice Dubin said that, gee, there's so many opinions in the debate, who needs them all? It's still democratic. Dubious Dubin, Ontario Court of Appeal Justice in Vezina, said, don't need all the candidates. Too many opinions already. <laughs> so, anyway, I object to their consent form where I had to consent, they got a right to chop it up and libel and slander me like the Dragon's Den did. So I object. Everybody knows I'm under duress here. Oh, geez, 12 minutes. I can't stop now. Oh, geez. I didn't know. Still got 12 minutes. I can talk about bus bucks. All right. Who wants to read about how bus bucks? Come on. Come on, read about bus bucks. You don't need jobs, eh? No, sir, the rich kids. You don't see any poor kids at these debates, right? Slugging a job off, that's too bad. Not interested in bus bucks, eh? Let the poor crumble. <laughs> yes. yes, sir, nobody interested in bus bucks? Yes, sir, the generation who don't care about jobs for youth. Sad, you know? Now, one person is interested in bus bucks to create jobs for youth. <laughs> Not even the youth. Twelve minutes. So, did you guys all sign your consent? You can't wear your buttons? You all left your buttons at home because Fuhrer Philp said so, eh? He's not here tonight. Yes, sir. Come on. You could have at least... You had one. You had one. You had one. You had one. They all had buttons last night. And because Fuhrer Philp decided that I was making my presentations too interesting with my props, he banned props and buttons. And now these guys are all leaving their buttons at home. Well, just remember last time when I put it on, they took me away. If they force me, I'll take it off. The point is, last time, took it to the Supreme Court of Canada. And they ruled that wearing a button isn't good enough reason to deny me my time. But since 93, they don't have to give me any time anyway. Big brother running the debates. That's why we got to kick him out of the control room, have city hall moderators, and there'll be reporters like everybody else. So big brother telling me how I got to wear, what kind of stuff and material I can present, gone. We'll let the candidates run the rules. And none of you guys complained, eh? Jeez. You all sign that consent without a knot. The right to cut it up and libel and defame us. Why would they want the right to libel and defame us, do you think? Why? Well, maybe you ain't important enough to be libeled and defamed like I was. Come on, kiddies, put your buttons back on. They're going to let us do it tonight. Supreme Court said buttons ain't a good enough reason to take us away. Be bold. Show some manhood. Put your buttons back on. Gee, ten more minutes. Can I do you a poem? <laughs> you want to know how I got into fighting poverty? All right, I'll do a poem. 
because no one else is going to entertain you for 10 minutes. And I have a stentorian voice, luckily. Uh, is this working? I can even use my props right now. Not bad. This is called the rich man. Because I have a million bucks, I sit upon my stern and leave my living tranquilly for other folks to earn. For in some procreative way that isn't very clear, a million bucks will breed a hundred thousand every year. So as I have a healthy hate of economic strife, I mean to stand aloof from it the balance of my life. And yet with sympathy I see the grimy son of toil and heartily congratulate the tiller of the soil. I like the miner in the mine, the sailor on the sea, because up to a hundred grand they sail in mine for me. For me, their toil is taxed until the annual extent. According to the baker's law, that gets me 10%. So get yourself a million bucks in any way you can and leave your future welfare to the noble working man. He'll buy you suits of Harris Tweed and Airedale in a car, your golf clubs in your morning times, your whiskey and cigar. He'll cozily install you in a cottage by a stream with every modern comfort in a garden that's a dream. Or if your taste be urban, he'll provide you with a flat, secluded from the clamor of the proletariat. With pictures, music, easy chairs, a table of good cheer, a guy can manage nicely on a hundred grand a year. And though around you painful signs of industry you view, why should you work when you can have your money work for you? So I'll get down upon my knees and bless the working man who offers me a life of ease through all my mortal span. Half a minute. But I have to get production going. You have to remove your badge before we go to air, okay? Ah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fuhrer Phelps, rule number 12. Thank you. I'll keep it in. Yes, sir. Can't use any press clippings, can't use any props. So I'll get down upon my knees and bless the working man who offers me a life of ease through all my mortal span, whose loins are lean to make me fat, whose slaves to keep me free, who dies before his prime to get me round the century, whose wife and children toil and turn until their strength is spent, that I may live in idleness upon my 10%. And if at times you blame me, why should I feel any blame? For in my place, I know that they would do the very same. Though they talk of revolution on a Sunday afternoon, just offer them a million bucks and see them change their tune. So I'll enjoy my dividends and live my life with zest. And bless the mighty men who first invented interest. <laughs> Anonymous. Oh, oh, sorry, I discovered the name of the poet, some Canadian during the war, and I did a post about him, and I forgot his name since then. But it is a Canadian, and I acknowledged it even if I forgot his name. So that was nice. So, you know, I object to the consent form that made me give them the right to chop it up and libel and defame me and we can't do anything about it. And these guys all signed it. You didn't read the consent form? The right to libel and defame you, chop it up any way they want. And that's what the Dragon's Den did to me. I did a pitch, 18 minutes on Branford Bucks. They chopped it down to one with 15 seconds out of me, made fun of me, sued them for defamation, and they went, you signed a consent to defamation. Well, I'm not signing a consent here happily to defamation. They forced us all to. That's why we gotta kick them out so that next time we're running the debate, Rogers can't force anybody to sign a consent, giving them the copyrights to everything. We've got about four minutes to airtime. Good. Why does Rogers own the copyrights to everything in this show? How come? Plus, they get to tell us what to wear. They get to tell us what our presentations are gonna be like. Fuhrer Phelps, rule number 12. Anyway, we're going to kick Rogers out by the next election and wear what we want. And you'll know that we've got democratic liberty when you see us with our buttons again. And a city hall moderator instead of a Rogers moderator. No offense. 
I'd be beating up anybody in your position. <laughs> I've been beating up enough, John. No, no, no. I got three more minutes. So, anyway. Now, you guys think you'll never be important enough to smear. But, I mean, you should see what they did to me. And by suing them, they had to give me the DVD of the original show. Ha, ha, ha. Now I can show the whole thing, me slapping around these billionaires with a $500 chip saying, put your money where your mouth is, and laughing at them. And they chop it down into a show where they laugh at me? No, sir. So Rogers owns everything, and they got the right to chop and dice it and make fun of us. And we can't do anything. So our consent form says, or they wouldn't have given us this valuable share of time that the city lets them control. So I want to take that valuable share of time away, and I'm practicing my two-minute pitch, because that's what I'm going to talk about. How are we doing so, everything, guys? Everything's good? Two minutes. All right. All right. Is that the opening pitch, two minutes? All right, so I got to tell the story about Rogers kicking him out by next time in two minutes. Or you could let us all enjoy the play. You know, I've been posting stuff to the Brantford Yahoo group, and ever since I posted the article, Tim Philp and me in the CRTC in court tomorrow, he started censoring every one of my posts. Tim Chambers, the guy who moderates that group. So if you didn't hear about the Dragon's Den, didn't hear about me and Tim Philp in the CRTC to the Supreme Court, that's because a guy named Tim Chambers has been censoring the open to everybody Yahoo group without telling anybody. Boy, if I had three minutes. <laughs> I know. It's going to go up on my video anyway, even if this stuff doesn't go up on theirs. All right, who's game to be interviewed here? Who is game to answer a question? Come on. Who's? Anybody game to answer a question? Come on, anybody game to answer a question? Will you answer a question, sir? I wanted your sheet before the thing Oh, okay. So here, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but I'm going to ask you the question. You won't be mad. I'm going to ask you the question, sir. Can you remember one thing another candidate said? All of it. No, no, seriously, just one thing another candidate said. Absolutely, from the uh, listing of the priorities to... Just one thing, just one thing. Uh, economic you... development, jobs, jobs, yeah, jobs. Yeah, 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 they all want, they're all in favor of motherhood you and apple pie. Thing, no, That's my point. One. That's my point. I'm trying to tell you, they didn't say anything you can remember. <laughs> all, all rhetoric. It's all, I want this for you, I want that for you, we should have this, without ever telling you how. Can I ask a question? Can I ask you a question, young man? Can I ask you a question? I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Nah, all right. No curiosity. The new generation, the slower ones in the bunch. Can I ask you a question? Oh, sure. All right. I want you to tell me one thing that you remember that another candidate said. Oh, I can't remember. Okay, that's, that's my point. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. All right. I want you to tell me one thing that you can remember another candidate said. Oh. Just You're one. You're putting me on the spot. Yeah, yeah, just one thing. All right. That's my point, though. <laughs> it's all rhetoric. <laughs> what they'd like to see. <laughs> Think about it when you go home. You can't remember one thing the other candidate said all night. Not one thing. Not interesting. <laughs> very good. <laughs> All right. You willing? All right. I want you to tell me one thing, one thing that another candidate said that you remember. One thing that another candidate said that you remember? That, that you re bus bucks are good. No, no, that's me. Anybody else? One thing. The economic development and jobs. Well, yeah, yeah, they all agreed with that, right? Anything at all you can remember? It's different from everybody said the same thing, right? <laughs> That's my point. We're not allowed to say it, but yes, did. What? <laughs> can I ask you guys a question? Sure. All right. I want you to tell me one thing that you can remember that the other candidates said. <laughs> one thing? I actually have written everything down. Just remember one now. Don't look. Don't look. Remember one. That's the point. 
The point is, it's all rhetoric. They want all these beautiful things for you without ever telling you how. It is a rhetoric. There was some substance. What? Name one. Well, the uh, newsletter. All right, here's a guy paid attention to something. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're the first one tonight who can remember anything, okay? All right, I'm out of here. Oh. All right. Oh, Tim Philp, where are you? We're going to get... We're going to get rid of Fuhrer Philp rule number 12. That's what I was worried about. Oh, I... <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to... Can I ask you gentlemen a question? No. Okay. I wanted to stump you, but I say, can you remember one thing another candidate said? Because most people can't. <laughs> That's me. That's me. That's not fair. I said the other guys. Sure, who's going to forget me? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Where's one of your bus bucks? I want to see one. Oh, well, you know the bus credits? You've seen the bus cards? You just... Well, don't you have the bus bucks now? It's going to look like the bus credits. What? Hey, I like, I like to have all these big shots all together in the same race. Makes it easier like for a long shot like me. So he won't even stand still to have a question. Well, he's going to have to face me all alone next week in Homewood, you know. I don't blame him. No, I don't I'm no fun. Me. I'm no fun. Can I ask you one question? Robert Brown, candidate Ward 4. Hey, John, are there two are aldermen who get elected per ward? Yeah, two aldermen per ward. Oh, well, I got Rob Ferguson in Ward 4 in favor of bus bucks so far and nobody else. But oh, certainly the question was, concept. well, the question is, I want you to answer one question. I want you to tell me one thing that you remember another candidate said tonight. There's some talk about accountability, but not as much talk of accountability to the citizens as there should have been. All right, okay. <laughs> if that stuck with you, <laughs> good night. <laughs> accountability. Face was in favor of bus bucks jobs for the kids, and here's three kids willing to work for bus bucks. Saying we'd love to work for bus pass dollars. Well done. But not one adult in the place was in favor of it. Not one. And three kids here all say they'd work for bus bucks. Don't tell me they're lazy. Good for you kids. Pass that on to your parents. I will.